Welcome. Let's uh, start with lab two. So lab one, I had you create a class under a package helper called Latin Square, and I had you implement a bunch of methods and give me a unit test for those methods to implement Latin Square. Lab, lab two is going to be implementing Sudoku, which is extending Latin Square. So let's get started. So I have I have the solution for Latin Square here. And what I did was I collapsed all the the methods, <laughs> so you can't see them. Um, just in case, you know, you, you have to, I'll give you the, the signature, but not the implementation, right? So in the left-hand side, in the margin, see the little plus sign? If I open this up, let's say, let's take a look at, let's say the constructor for this. So if I open it up, it'll show me the implementation for the method. So what I wanted to do was, let's take a look at the, the difference between lab one and lab two. And I'm gonna open up lab one. Lab one, I asked you to implement the constructor for Latin square, the getter setter has duplicates, does element exist, has all values, the getter for column and row, and is Latin square and contains zero. So there's a couple of changes with this lab. And I've, I should have them noted with lab with uh, the version 1.2, in other words, lab two. I want to implement ignore zero. So what ignore zero is going to do is if you if you ask for is Latin square, if it's a Latin square in every way except for zeros, I want you to return a Latin a Latin square. So it's it's a way for me to turn off or on the zero check. There's a new thing called puzzle violation. That's new. So let's let's go through the list. Okay, so ignore zero is new. That's that's existing already. This this is new. The puzzle violation is new. The constructor for Latin square is the same. The getter for Latin square. I don't think I had a getter before. Did I have get? No, I did. I get Latin square. That's the same. Set Latin square. Okay. I don't think I had a setter in this. Here we go. <laughs> it, it does have a setter, excuse me. Setter is there. Ignore zero is new. That's the new uh, attribute, ignore zero. Set ignore zero, that's new. So this is the getter setter for ignore zero. This is going to return back what the status of B ignore zero is. Has duplicates uh, is the same. Has duplicates overloaded, that's new. So has duplicates has, um, two implementations. One is you pass in an array of things and it tells you whether or not you have a duplicate. Has duplicates in version 1.2 says, is there any duplicates in the Latin square, in the entire Latin square? So this, this looks to be overloaded. This has duplicates and this has duplicates. Make sure I'm not going crazy here. Has duplicates and this, ah. <laughs> to that side. I had to collapse it again. Has duplicates and this has duplicates. Remove zeros, that's new. Remove zeros says you pass in an array and it passes back an integer array removing the zeros from it, that's new. Does element exist is, is existing, has all values is existing, get column, get row exists, is Latin square exists, contain zero is new. No, I take that back. Contains zero. That was part of lab, lab one. This getter for puzzle violations is new. Clear puzzle violations is new. And add puzzle violation is new. So what exactly is a puzzle violation? I'm going to give you the implementation for this, this puzzle violation. So the puzzle violation is uses an enum to tell you what kind of puzzle violation it is and where the puzzle violation happened. So if there was a duplicate value in row zero, it would be a row violation of zero. So let's take a look at the enum for puzzle violation. The violations you can have for um, a Latin square Sudoku, a duplicate row, duplicate column, duplicate region, we'll talk about regions for lab two, an invalid value, contain zero or missing zero. These are the puzzle violations that I have for um, for Latin square and Sudoku. What I'm trying to capture is 
is if the Sudoku didn't work, what are the reasons it didn't work, right? Was there a duplicate in row zero and one? If it is, I have two puzzle violations. Is it a, is it a violation because of row zero and column one? That's two different puzzle violations. So the idea is I wanna capture where I, my failures are and then not just whether there was a failure, but where the failure was and all the failures in the Latin square. Latin square doesn't change that much. This is almost essentially the same class as you had before. So let, give me just two seconds and I'm going to, uh, okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen again and I'm going to open up Sudoku and collapse all the members in Sudoku and share my screen again. And here we go. Sudoku is new. This is a new class for lab two. Sudoku is in a class called package game. Okay, so a different class. Package helper had, had Latin square from lab one and puzzle violation, that's new. And package enum had the enum for puzzle violation. Under package game, we've got Sudoku. Sudoku extends Latin square. So we're gonna talk about what extension means and inheritance, but this extends Latin square. I've got methods in Sudoku well, let's go over the attributes first. I size, which is the size of Latin square, excuse me, size of the Sudoku. The square root size, okay? So these two things, the size and the square root size. If I ask for a Sudoku of size nine, this should build me a Sudoku of nine by nine. If I ask for a Sudoku of size four, this should build me a Sudoku of size four. The square root size. So how do I know that I have a valid, quote, valid Sudoku? The way it works is um, the columns, the number of columns and rows have to be the same, right? So it's gotta be a four by four or, you know, a nine by nine. And the square root of that size has to be zero. Excuse me, the, the square root of the size, excuse me, has to be a whole number. So for instance, four, the square root of four is two, four by four works. Five by five doesn't work because the square root of five is not a whole, it's not a whole number. Uh, nine by nine works because the square root of nine is three, it works, it's a whole number. Square root of 12 doesn't work, it's not a whole number. Sudoku of size 16 by 16 would actually work. It works for us. It's a, a four by four Sudoku, or excuse me, a square root of 16 is four. A, four, a 16 by 16 would work. For our example, for our, our puzzle though, we're going to use the three by three and the nine by nine. Again, you could have a 25 and have a five, <laughs> have a, uh, a giant impossible Sudoku to solve. The constructor for Sudoku, I've got, I'm passing in, you notice there's no, no R constructor for the Sudoku. I'm either passing in the size or passing in uh, a two dimensional array for Sudoku. I've got a getter. Okay. And then I've got get region. And I've got get region passing in the column and row and get region passing in the region. Overloaded, get region. Let's go back to lab one and I'm gonna show you what I mean by region. So this is a Sudoku, a solved Sudoku, a Sudoku in the solved state, but this is a good Sudoku. This is a, a nine by nine Sudoku. If I, if I ask for, if this is also a Latin square by the way, if I ask for column zero, for this. It should pass me back a one-dimensional array of values 561, 847, 923. If I ask for row three, it should pass me back 859, 761, 423. Row three, this is row zero, the first one. So this is row three. If I ask for row eight, it should pass me back 345, 286, 179. If I ask for row 10, which doesn't exist, it should give me a pointer error. It should We'll handle how, what we'll do with row 10. Or if I ask for column 17, which doesn't exist, same thing, should throw them in there. What is region then? Region is five, three, four, six, seven, two, one, nine, eight. region, this is region zero. So there's region zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I ask for region seven, it should pass me back, five, three, seven, four, one, nine, two, eight, six. So get region, Let's go back over to the code now. Get region, if I passed in two here, for example, two should pass in region zero, one, two, nine, one, two, three, four, eight, five, six, seven. 
if I ask for region, column and row, let's say I ask for region zero one, that's column and row of the zero one, it should pass me back column row zero, row one would be this six is this, right? It should know to pass me back if I'm asking for that column row, five, three, four, six, seven, two, one, nine, eight. If I ask for column eight, row zero, that would be this value. It should pass me back nine, one, two, three, four, eight, five, six, seven. So that's what I'm, what's that I mean by get region. Has duplicates. Has duplicates is just kind of like the has duplicates we had in Latin square, except for this has duplicates is also checking to see if there's a duplicate in the region, right? So let's say we were looking at um, this region, region zero. And I was looking at this value, this where I'm at, this is column one, row zero. Are there any duplicates? Five, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, no duplicates. Are there any duplicates in the column? Three, seven, nine, five, two, one, six, eight, four, no duplicates. Are there any duplicates in the region? Five, three, four, six, seven, two, one, nine, eight, no. Right, so this has duplicates check in Sudoku is looking at all three of those things. That's what I mean by that has duplicates. Is partial Sudoku is Sudoku. Okay, is Sudoku says it's a Latin square and in other words, it's it's exactly the same thing as Latin square is Latin square, except for it's also making sure there's no duplicates in the region, right? So we're extending what we're doing with is Latin square to is Sudoku looking at the region. Is partial Sudoku, what this means is, do I have any violations minus the zero violation, right? So if I had, let's say if I looked over here and I looked at these two states, right? Is Sudoku, this would return back a true for this one. Is Sudoku, this would return back a false because the zeros are all over the place. These blanks in, in Java is gonna be zeros. Plus the duplicates plus, right? So you'd have duplicate zeros, you'd have duplicate, you'd have zeros in the, in the what do you call it? In the cell, excuse me, in the row, the column and the region. So is Sudoku would not work for this. So if I wanna to check to see whether I have a duplicate or not, I can't just say, I can't say has duplicates in five, three, zero, zero, seven, zero, zero, zero. You'll have zeros all over the place. You'll have duplicates all over the place. So I have a method, a new method in the Latin square called remove zeros. That's why I had to remove zeros. So you'll pass in on that remove zeros, five, three, zero, zero, seven, zero, 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 and it'll pass back five, three, seven. Are there any duplicates in five, three, seven? Um, there's no duplicates in 537, so it'll, this, does that make sense? In other words, I'm looking at this. The only way a, is Sudoku, is partial Sudoku should fail is if I have an actual duplicate 533, three, then it is Sudoku, is partial Sudoku is false. So that's what I meant by is partial Sudoku. Is valid value. What is valid value is gonna do is, you're gonna pass in the column and row and the value and it's gonna return back a true or false to see whether or not this thing could work, right? So back over here again, if I pass in, let's say for column two, row zero, which is this spot right here, if I pass in uh, seven, should seven work? Is it a duplicate column? No. Is it a duplicate in the region? No. Is it a duplicate in the row? Yes. So that is a false for is valid value. I know that four works, obviously. So is four, does four work? Is four duplicate row? Nope. Is four duplicate in the column? Nope. Is four duplicate in the region? Nope. Four would work for this value. But then again, two would also work for this value. It's a valid value so far. It didn't, it didn't fail yet. So two would actually work for this. Four and two would both work for this. That's what is valid value is. So let's go over lab two again. I need Sudoku created. I need the methods implemented. Most of these are easy. This is even easy. You already got it in, in, uh, <laughs> in is Latin square, ain't that tricky. Um, you'll have to implement is, Latin, is has duplicates in the Latin square. That's not that tricky. Is partial Sudoku in Sudoku, that's interesting. I mean, you kind of have the Latin square. Is Sudoku is pretty close to that. Um, not much tricky, it's not very tricky from here. Now, again, I just started toying with this. We're not gonna be in Java 1.8, we're gonna be in Java 1.14. You'll see that updated. Um, 
And I won, by the way, uh, what do you call it? Unit tests for Sudoku. I won unit tests for all these methods. I won unit tests for the region, for the get region on both, right? The way you'll do it is you'll create a Sudoku, a known Sudoku um, that works. You'll ask for the region by region number and then by column row and test. And that's what I'm looking for for lab two. Implement Sudoku, implement the methods in Sudoku, make some minor changes in Latin square. And the, what I want you to do is when you're looking at the, when you're looking at the Java doc, I'm gonna do my level best to make sure that version is, is part of the Java doc. So if I go back to, uh, let's go back to the resources. This was the Java doc from lab one. So under Latin square where I have, Let's see. Yeah, here we go. So it says since lab one. If it says since lab one in the method, then uh, let's say you're doing lab two and it says since lab one of the methods, I probably didn't change it. So in other words, it's it's the same method as it was in lab one. If it says lab two in there or um, a change in lab two, then it's either a changed method or it's a new method. Right, so um, I know that, let's see, I think has duplicates is a new method for lab two. What I'm trying to say is just because a method existed before doesn't mean I had didn't have to tweak it in a later lab to fix it, so that makes sense. What I'm looking at is this since in the Java doc, look at the since to make sure you're, you're not re-implementing something that's already been implemented. Okay. We're getting close to uh, the, the hard part, which is actually generating a Sudoku. Generating a Sudoku is not, is kind of tricky. So what I mean by generating this, we're going to be doing a lab three. Imagine if, uh, if I have this Sudoku, or, or better yet, I have a blank Sudoku. I have a nine by nine with all zeros and all 81. How do I get the code so it generates a Sudoku that works like this? It ain't that easy. <laughs> it's kind of a pain, right? So in other words, I just can't pick that random values out of the sky. I've got to have some rhyme or reason to set these values and to make it a, a workable solution. Um, if we do it right though, if we do our code right, not only will you be able to create a new Sudoku from scratch, but you could use that same Sudoku to solve a partial Sudoku. So for example, uh, let, let's say we're in, Lab two, you're gonna do, that's done, right? Lab three is generating the Sudoku. Hmm. If, I, if I do my code correctly, if I pass in this partial two-dimensional array, our code will generate the solution for the rest of the two-dimensional array. It would also generate it from nothing. In other words, you didn't have any of these filled out. So that's what we're gonna be doing in lab three. Lab three is gonna be tricky. Lab three is gonna be using recursion. Um, it's a little bit tricky. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. Good luck on lab two. Have a good day.